Steel Design is all about the connections, connections, connections. Quite easy to design the members, but you should be spending all your time around detailing and designing the correct connections for specific locations. So I'll be going through the different types of connections that you have available to you, some of the benefits and drawbacks of using each of them. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. There are two major types of connections. Either you've got your welded connections or your bolted connections. Welded connections are really good as they allow you to join the member up directly allowing you to transfer the moment through the connection as needed. So designing specific welds for the specific forces that they're going to need to resist. The problem with a welded connection is either you need to manufacture the whole section in a shop and transport it to site. Depending on the size of the structure, this can be quite limiting as you can only transport so much in one go. Or you can weld it on site and welding takes time. So this can slow down your construction if you're gonna allow for that site welding time. So it can be quite costly if you need to have a lot of on-site welding. And the other connection is your bolted connection. Now this is most preferred by contractors as it allows you to build a building quite quickly as you need to only put it up there and bolt it on. So these are generally a cheaper connection if done on site and normally preferred. There's many types of different bolted connections and we'll go through each of them. The first and most common connection is your fin plate connection. So typically you have bolts in a line and the number of bolts is generally based on the depth of the structure. So you divide the depth of the member by 100 and this is typically how many bolts you'll have in a fin plate in a vertical connection. So if it's 600 deep, you'll have six bolts. If it's 300 deep, you'll have three bolts. These type of connections are generally a simple connection or a pin connection as they normally don't transfer at any moment but as they do also provide slip, as there is some slip in those holes. There is some rigidity brought out of the connection, but typically you ignore it as it's not meant to transfer that moment. The other issue is with these fin plate connections, as you got the bolts a certain distance out, this can apply a different torque to the structure that you may need to consider. As the moments here, there is no moment transfer, so there's a twist in the system that may need careful consideration. These fin type connections can either be to a column or a beam to beam connection. So they, you'll see them quite often in a lot of steel structures. Much like bolted connections supporting steel structures, don't forget to lock down that like button. Not only does it support my channel, but it also gets it out to more people. Another common connection is a bearing type connection. And this is typically to a column and a beam. So the beam will come over and sit on top of your connection. So you'll have a top plate and generally bolts through the flange of the member that's sitting on top. This connection can either be a pinned, semi-rigid or a fixed connection. And it's all depending on the stiffness and the plates that you're connecting to. Typically in a rigid connection, you will see gusset plates as you need to limit and stop the flexibility of where the bolts are located. You'll also see additional stiffener plates in the beam over to additionally stop that rotation. The benefit of this connection is quite easy and quick to put up is you just put the column up and sit the beam on top. So it's already somewhat rigid and you just need to put some locator bolts. Now, if we go to the bottom of the column, this will also have a similar connection with similar properties. This is where you've got a bottom plate and typically bolts down to either a beam underneath or a footing, depending on where you are in the height of the structure. And again, these connections at the base are typically pinned as you're normally not trying to transfer moment through them. However, if you make it rigid enough, you can transfer moments, so it can be a fixed connection if needed. One pro tip on the base connections, it may be really easy to only have two bolts as that's all you need to resist the lateral forces. However, it's recommended to have four bolts in the base of that connection so you can get some temporary fixity out of it. This allows the steel fabricator to put the column down, fix it off so it's somewhat partially fixed, meaning they won't need any temporary props. So it makes it cheaper and easier to build despite you having more material in the base of the structure. These end plate bearing connections can also be for a beam to column or a beam to beam connection. And typically this where you've got your vertical plate and the beam coming in and you're bolting it into the side of a column. So if the column keeps going up and you need to have a fixity into the side, that's a little bit more rigid, you can do it in this situation. And again, they have their similar properties as those top or bottom plates. So they're either pinned, semi-rigid or rigid. The problem with having an end plate connection is the fact that you've got very limited tolerance in construction, as the beam needs to be the exact length to fit in the location that you've put it into. So although it may allow for a nice clean connection to go up there, it doesn't allow for the flexibility if the members are slightly out. Where steel structures are really large, you're normally limited by the size of the structure that you can bring to site, limiting to about 12 or 16 meters, depending on what can fit on the truck. So this will mean typically you'll need some sort of splice connection, and this can be done in a number of ways. We talked about that moment connection, so you can either butt two members up together and weld them up, have that splice connection, or you can also have a bolted splice connection. So transferring both the moment force through plates top and bottom and the vertical force through a vertical cleat plate. These type of connections 
will not only need to be designed for the moment that is in the specific location that you're designing for, but you will also need some minimum moment design, which is typically about half the member capacity. If you make it too soft, you can get too much flexibility in the connection. So there will need to be minimum design, not only for robustness, but also transferring the forces for deflection. Now that we're going to the splice connection, it's critical to talk about the different types of bolts that you have available to you. So you either have an S bolt, TB bolt, or TF bolt. The S bolt is the typical one that you see in most connections, it's just snug fit, but it typically allows for some sort of slip. Now, if you need to make sure that you've got a proper moment connection bolt, this is where you're going into a TB bolt typically. So it's frictioned up to a certain point to very limit the slip that you've got in there but not too tight. When you are tightening it up, it does reduce the shear forces that the bolt can resist as it can't resist shear forces and moment at the same time. Then you've got the last type of bolt, which is the TB, which is the friction type bolt. Now, friction type bolts require a lot of special preparation as you need to roughen the surface to allow for the friction forces to be there. And these are only in really specific locations. So for whatever reason, you can't allow for any slip. You tighten up the bolt for the friction type connection and have it in these locations. And the friction type connection is typically more torque than the TB, so it has even less shear resistance than the TB bolt has. On big portal frame structures, you'll quite often see haunch connections. So either where you're connecting a beam to beam at the midpoint or a column to beam connection, you'll see that they've increased the depth of the connection by adding a piece on the bottom of their beam. So what this does is increases the depth, thus locally increasing the stiffness and the amount of force that you can transfer to the connection. This has great benefits in pulling back the moments and helping with the deflections in the design. And in big steel frame structures as well, not all members need to transfer load. So you'll have such things as mullions or transoms, which only need to transmit force in one direction. So you'll have a mullion that will come up and sit onto a beam. We don't want it to transfer the load from the beam to that mullion as it won't be able to take it. It's only there to stop the lateral forces from wind that are applied to it. So to allow us to do that, typically you have a fin plate connection, but you'll have a slotted hole in there. So it allows for vertical movement while still resisting those lateral forces. Sometimes in connections that need to transfer a lot of force, the webs or the flanges may not be thick enough to transfer the moment through them. So in these situations, you'll have a doubler plate. So a double plate sits in between the member and the flange or the web to increase the thickness to allow it to transfer more force. Because when you think about the loads of transmitting through a steel connection, the whole member typically needs to take and resist that force. However, the connection is only on one side. So you may need to locally thicken the connection in specific locations to allow for the force to transmit through the junction. There is one other type of connection, which is that pure pin, where you've got to pin through the junction. So allowing for slip. So it's allowing for a pure rotation and thus no moment can be transferred through this junction. As you can see, there's many ways to support steel structures. And if you want to support this channel further, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description, much like these many members here. Without their support, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.